wow, <laughs> an applause, and I didn't even start yet. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lizzie Jongma, and I'm data manager at the Rijksmuseum Amsterdam. And before I will talk to you about the open journey that the Rijksmuseum made uh, during the last couple of years, I'd like to introduce myself. In my household, we have two iPads, a Google Pad, two iPhones, a Google phone. We have a little Dora computer. We have 10 game computer games. And we have a an, an multimedia box for the television. Now, you may wonder how big is this family. It only consists of two adults and two children. My youngest one is three years old, and she asked Santa Claus for her own iPad. So this is where I come from, and this is what the average Dutch family looks like nowadays. The Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam closed its doors 10 years ago because of extensive renovations. The entire building had to be redecorated, refurbished, redesigned. During the 10 years, we worked very hard to recreate a new physical museum. But while we were doing that, the entire world outside of the museum changed. It changed from a physical, a built world into a digital, an untouchable world of digital things and digital documents and digital images. And during the last 10 years, we started to realize that a lot of people will visit the Rijksmuseum Museum because it's an excellent museum. It has great quality in art. But a lot of people aren't able to come to Amsterdam or are sitting on their couch at night wondering what Vermeer's works of art look like and simply Google Vermeer instead of, I don't know how else they would find Vermeer's on this globe. But these digital consumers, and we all are digital consumers, they are part of the museum's visitors. They are part of our world. And as a museum, we wanted to have them over and have them in our museum as well. And this is why we started thinking about opening up our collection and opening up in a big way. Um, so years ago, we started digitizing all of our images in high resolution. And um, we started uh, writing structured digital metadata. And in 2011, we decided to put it online. Um, we started with poor interfaces because it's a journey that no one took in 2010 or 2011. And we were sort of stumbling on our way through the digital world. So we started with a I'm sorry if I offend someone, with a library-like search system where you could search for a work of art by Rembrandt, and once you found a thumbnail and a very limited description of a work of art by Rembrandt or Vermeer, you would click on it and you would get a high-resolution image of a work of art by Rembrandt or Vermeer. And just, just let me point to you, please look at the girl on the night watch on the screen. This is, what you can, this is what she's like on the internet. This is how big our images are. This is how much you can zoom into our objects. So we had all these digital treasures, but we had hidden them away behind awful search possibilities, and we kept them locked away on our own website behind difficult queries that no one can reproduce. So in 2011, we defined a new strategy we said we're open. Open means that you can find us. Open means that you can touch us. Open means that you can enjoy, touch, glorify our works of art. So first of all, it means that we had to um, open our collection to everyone. We also said, well, if you can't come to the Rijksmuseum, Museum, but you can go to Wikipedia, or you can go to our website, or you can go to Flickr, or you can go to Pinterest, why not put our art there? If that's where the audience is, let's put it there. So in 2011, um, we started redesigning our website, but we first start, started with our open data pro program. So we built an API, and 
I have a slide uh, coming up about our new API. We built an API which is a, a simple piece of technique that allows people from outside the museum to download our entire collection, both descriptions and metadata, and use it for whatever purposes people want to use it. So hackers can use it for hackathons, Europeana can use it to upload our collection into the Europeana database. Wikipedia can use it to upload our information on Wikipedia. And someone selling postcards can use parts of our collections to sell postcards of the Nightwatch or all of our vermeers. People are always asking us, don't you lose money? Aren't you afraid that people will reuse your collection for commercial purposes? My first response is, they already do so. If I go to China, there's an entire village of Chinese painters repainting our works of art. And they sell them for so much less money than my museum does that I cannot compete with this Chinese village. The only problem is that they use old copies of images from the Rijksmuseum. They buy old school books and they repaint awful reproductions of our works of art. So everyone in China, and probably half of the world, has a very poor reproduction of a Vermeer or a Rembrandt in its house because someone is reproducing a poor reproduction. And that is why Taco Dibbets made the bold statement that if people want to print Vermeers on toilet paper, please use high quality vermeers on toilet paper, then at least you'll have a beautiful picture to look at while you're in the toilet. Um, our collection was always a source of inspiration for artists. Van Gogh came to the Rijksmuseum to watch Rembrandt, to see the Rembrandt. And one of the things that struck him, and you can see it on the picture on your screen, is that Rembrandt is one of the only 17th century painters that has layers of paint on his paintings. He's more of a 3D modeler than the very polished 17th century images you usually see. And this inspired Vincent van Gogh, not just this, but this inspired him to create his own works of art. And this is what our collection should do. This is our, one of our tasks as a museum, is to inspire artists to create new art. So when we launched our new website, um, we put art in the middle of the website. So we put high-res images on the first pages of every object, and you can zoom into it. But we, oh, excuse me, we also built a part on our website called the Reich Studio, where people can collect or select or, or use or reuse everything they like in our collection. And this is just a simple screenshot of what people do on our website. It's a bit Pinterest-like, and you can see everyone has its own expectations or its own surprises in our collection. Every person coming to our website finds something that they like or didn't know of before or are interested in, and everyone creates its own museum within our museum. It was just a thing we put in the website because we were on an adventure and we didn't know what would work or what wouldn't work. But by now, 200,000 sets are built by people coming to our website. And we have the most amazing sets, like this one. This is a lady trying to explain, maybe to herself, maybe to all of us, what it means to be Dutch. And I'm totally surprised because yeah, I can relate to this as being Dutch. So it's more than words about who we are. It's images of what we are. And this can inspire other people to create new art, to create new works of art. Um, this one, I should have put it somewhere else. But we also decided to rebuild our open data set because we now think that our collection isn't just we're not one museum anymore that has 8,000 works of art on display and everyone is walking the same route through the museum and has the same experience. We now believe that we are multi-museums with multi-exhibitions, uh, multi-experiences. 
So we even rebuilt our API so every person on this planet can ask for its own specific set, its own specific images. If you're interested in 17th century tulips and want to build your own website on 17th century tulips, you will get all of our metadata and all of our images only for this set. Or if you want it all, you can have it all. And yes, we are so happy with whatever people do with our collection. We're happy when people build tattoos. Uh, this is a stick-on tattoo, this is not a real tattoo, but I've seen images of real art tattoos on people. It seems to be a hype. Uh, if you have one tattoo on your back, please be our guest. Um, <laughs> and please send us a photo of it. We will upload it on our website to show what art means for you, what you recreate with our art. Same goes for this fat boy. If you want to lay on a fat boy with a fat boy on it, we love you to do so. Um, and the dresses, it's actually a big success. It's a company that is in dresses and they use our collection to print on dresses and it's a big success. A lot of people wear them. They're actually very expensive. I can't afford them. <laughs> but if you want to wear it, be our guest. And also uh, people from just from playing with our collection, create new things like the, the image in the middle on top. It's, it's a guy that used Facebook face recognition software on our collection and he cut out all faces on all paintings in our collection. So now we have a set of 200,000 faces and a lot of work to define who these people are and see if we can match them with existing people or biblical people. So people take our collection and create new things with it. And we would like to encourage that. That's why we also started our Reich Studio Award. We invite people to take art from the Reich's Museum and create a new product with it or create something, something new, something artistic with it. And if it's, a com if it's a commercially usable, then we will sell it in our shop or reuse it in any way that is possible. Um, and by the way, um, we are also in Europeana, in Wikipedia, and in Art Store, which is something that most museums uh, also want. So we're not crying, we're not crybabies, we're cheering, we're happy people. Um, we have 200,000 visitors on our website per month. Um, we have almost 2 million visitors since April 13th when the museum reopened. We are, we are an economic force in Amsterdam. We are a motor of the Amsterdam industry. And this will bring us so much further than just being a museum in a city that just opened its doors. Thank you.